Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. In farming, we often speak in terms of bushels, a crop yields so many bushels per acre, a grain bin or grain contract is for a certain number of bushels. However, a bushel in one place might not necessarily be the same as a bushel in another place. For instance, in Canada versus the US, there's a, a slight difference. So for this wheat school, we find out more from On Fan. On is the chief statistician with the Canadian Grain Commission. I think first, people must know that a bushel relates to a volume. And uh, as you mentioned, the term bushel applies in Canada and in the US, but there are different types of bushels. Um, if you can even Google it, you will find um, a bushel defined as the British bushel, and then you also have the US bushel. And basically in Canada, we use we base our bushel weights on the British bushel, which is uh, roughly 36.369 liters, uh, whereas the U.S. bushel would be a little bit less at about 35.239 liters. So depending on um, what bushel is being used in a calculation, it could impact the outcome. So when it comes to why this is important for, for producers to know, I guess it would be in situations where you're dealing with cross-border movement of of grain, potentially a contract from a U.S. buyer? That's exactly it. In general, the calls that I've, been, that I've got, gotten in the past question how come a, a particular contract didn't pay them for a certain quality, which they thought they had met. But when I asked them, okay, when you're talking about bushel weights or test weight, um, what bushels are you using to calculate that? And if you're dealing with, uh, with contracts, make sure you know what bushel refers to. Is it referring to the Canadian bushel U, uh, or the British bushel, or is it referring to the U.S. bushel? And again, there could be that slightly, almost one liter difference. My advice has been know what bushel is being used in the transaction. What, what would that one liter, or slight, roughly one liter, be in terms of percentage difference? The, the percentage difference would relate only to the volume. But remember, the other factor that could change that calculation is the weight. Mm -hmm. And relative to the British bushel, that difference is about 3% in terms of volume. Mm -hmm. But again, it, the real impact is when you're weighing the actual grain in that particular volume. The other critical difference that the Canadian system applies uh, the, which differs from the U.S. is that we account for effects of compaction. So in determining test, we, we use a device called a Shopper chondrometer. And the chondrometer basically is a metal cylinder which has perforations at the bottom, supposedly to allow air to pass through as the grain is being dropped down with the aid of a metal puck. So it's all gravity, but also there's a little bit of a force from the puck that pushes the grain down, and, and basically you hear a little bit of a slamming as it happens. And all that air being removed out of the, out of the container uh, allows more grain theoretically to pack in and accounts for compaction. Um, whereas in the traditional or US method, uh, they wouldn't use such a device. And so it would be just simply whatever gets poured into a container and calculated, interpolated to a higher volume. Also, the charts also provide uh, two different types of bushels, which I think might, might have contributed to the confusion. Um, you hear of the Avery bushel, and then you hear of the Winchester bushel. The term bushels Avery applies to the Canadian context, where the determination accounts for compaction, and it is based on the British bushel. When you apply to the American context, where you don't account for compaction, and you're using the U.S. bushel, um, then we refer to that as bushels Winchester. So hence the terminology uh, differences. I don't actually know the origins of them, 
and it's really hard to find any good literature that will tell me. Okay. Yeah. Finally, then, on do you find there are a lot of people that aren't aware of of this difference in a simple unit like a, a bushel that we refer to so often in, in agriculture? Um, I, I think I think there's enough of uh, consistency in the calls that we get. Um, from producers or companies asking the same type of questions, which indicate to me that either it be change in staff or change in people new to the industry, um, but this so-called confusion um, hasn't gone away. And, and again, I think we need to put more effective information explaining the difference and what producers should be looking out for when they're dealing with bushels and bushel weights. Well, thanks for your time, and thanks for explaining it, clearing it up for us. I, I hope that helped. Thanks for your time. On Fan, Chief Statistician with the Canadian Grain Commission, again, explaining the, the slight difference but significant difference between a bushel in Canada versus the U.S. You can find out more, again, on the Canadian Grain Commission's websites or at wheatschool.com. <music>